Hello and welcome, I'm Maria from Sew Through Time and this time we're talking about Victorian period products and testing one out. Just a heads up, since we are talking about periods, if you're uncomfortable with a subject or blood, and I'm also going to talk about my personal experiences and my own personal period, so if that sort of things are icky to you, just maybe skip this video. Unfortunately, there's very little primary sources about period care in basically any his previous century because most of everything written, especially medical texts, are written by men and periods weren't really the domain of men, not even doctors. Because you have to remember that in the Victorian era, well, they didn't believe anymore in the womb that goes around your body and just causes distress, but they did believe in hysteria still that they thought was caused by having a uterus. So it's not exactly like modern science was very far with how the female body works. For most of history, it seems that women have been using some sort of rags or other or apron or some sort of cloth to cover their period needs. And Abby Cox did a wonderful video about the 18th century period apron, and I'll link that down below if you're interested in that. But this time we're focusing on the Victorian era. For most of history, periods have been sort of a taboo, but not necessarily amongst women. Women from generation to generation would share the knowledge how to deal with periods and what is normal and what isn't normal and how to deal with different sort of abnormalities and just in general, how to live with them. But this wasn't information that was considered appropriate to be shared. Among so it wasn't information that men would be privy to. And this is also one of the reasons why it wasn't written down. Not only didn't men really know about it to write it down, but also women wouldn't be comfortable writing it down because a possible male could read it then in the future. So it wasn't really something that they would discuss in writing. So that's why, unfortunately, a lot of this information is really hard to come by and we have to rely on little tidbits of information. Most of the information for this video comes from a medical source from 1853 that is basically talking about women's health in general and there's just a few lines that actually have anything to do with period products and what women used. And that's really all we have to go on until we come to the end of the 19th century when we start seeing in catalog, mail order catalogs all sort of information because they start selling period products. Though in the late 19th century we start seeing the first disposable period products and just more modern period products in general, you start seeing sanitary belts that would attach a pad to them. They're much like a garter belt except for a pad. But these products didn't really catch on immediately and it did, they didn't become super popular until the early 20th century. So what did women use for period protection before that? Well, according to a medical test, uh, text that I found from 1853, um, a, the doctor talks about periods in general in this writing, I'll link it down below. But he mentions specifically that he asked women what they used and apparently some of them said that they don't use anything. I don't know how much of this is actual truth and how much it, of it is just that it wasn't considered a topic that would be okay to discuss with your doctor. So they were just like, oh no, I, I, I don't use anything. But I think this is also where the myth of free bleeding comes. Sure, in every time, modern times included, there are some women that do free bleed, but it, I don't believe that it could have ever really been a very widely spread habit because we have to remember that this is also a time when doing your laundry was a tedious process and outer garments especially often couldn't be washed at all. They were mainly maintained by brushing and airing them out. So there's no way you would take the chance of ruining your expensive silk by getting blood on it. 
So yes, I'm sure some women chose to free bleed, but mostly those would have been women that are that bleed very mildly anyways. Just like probably today, if you're a more heavy bleeder, I don't think you would have in, in any era would be comfortable free bleeding. So according to this doctor, what most women used was a compression bandage type of contraption that was a T-shaped thing made out of diaper cloth. Now diaper cloth in the era referred to a very absorbent, usually linen, sometimes cotton fabric that was woven in layers. It has these like little pockets that form because there's like layers that are separated and then the edges of them are in a certain pattern, usually in a check or diamond pattern. Those only catch each other so that it forms a very airy, pockety, very absorbent, lightweight fabric. This was a common household type of linen for hundreds of years. It was used for work aprons and baby's diapers and apparently women's period products as well. I wanted to test how this actually works, like, because most of us tend to think, and from, I think most of us at least who have elder grandparents, have heard horror stories about pads that move around and don't hold it in and leak and all that stuff. So I wanted to test out how it actually works. I personally bleed quite heavily on my second day, and after that, if fades out quite quickly. So I filmed this so that I would test on that second day so that I would be bleeding at my heaviest so that you could get really the idea of can it actually hold the flow and does it feel uncomfortable wearing it? Because that's what my main concern is that does the cloth absorb it fast enough so that you actually feel dry? Because that's my main issue with modern pads, especially modern cloth pads, is that you sometimes get that wet feeling and I really hate that. And the other thing that I really want to find out is that since it doesn't have any adhesive or elastics to it, that how does it stay in place? That can I actually like move around and not have it like slip out of the way and also will I get my thighs dirty? Because that's like one of my main concerns is that if it moves around a lot, that will it then make my thighs dirty? I mean, sure, my stockings are much lower, but I still like don't like that feeling and I don't like the idea of having, having blood stains on my thighs. I start by cutting out a 30 by 40 inch rectangle of the fabric. Then four inches down from one of the shorter edges, I cut a 10 inch slit. This allows me to fold down the part that goes in between my legs, forming that T shape. Next, I rolled hem all the edges. In the era, this would have most likely been done by hand, but I ain't gonna do that. I sew strips of cotton tape to the upper edge of that four inch strip. And now here is the finished thing. You fold the outer edges to form the T-shape. Okay, I'm gonna demonstrate how this works on top of my onesie union suit, whatever you wanna call it, for decency's sake. So I grab the T and put the band behind me so that the folds are against my body, against my back. Then I bring them to the front. And this is now too high. And I keep it on my lower belly. And there, I tie it in a bow and now the back is kind of just hanging there. So I grab it from between my legs, 
pull it into the front and then I'm going to insert it into the belt so that then uh, this is too loose. I need to shorten those. That's why I left them long so that I would know on my body. Anyway, so now I grab this in the front and flip it underneath and put it underneath the band. And now this new bit can be also inserted into your crotch area so that you have a double fold. And when you keep it low like this, it's underneath your corset line. So it shouldn't press against that. It looks kind of like <laughs> one of those very weird Victorian men's swim trunks, but <laughs> I mean, it doesn't feel uncomfortable like this. Now I'll try it with clothes and see how it works in practice. Okay, so I'm now in the car. Uh, we've been driving for about 40 minutes and I just put it on before we left so I've been wearing it for about 40 minutes and everything feels good. Um, I have to say that it, putting it on it did feel like kind of strange because there's no elastics on the side like modern panties have so it was a bit more breezy. <laughs> when you walk than with modern things. Um, and I have no idea if you're supposed to like wear these with drawers or without drawers because they do kind of cover everything drawers do. But I decided to wear drawers just because my Victorian sh shift or chemise isn't super long. So I just felt more comfortable wearing drawers on top of it. and. That's another layer of protection in case there is any leakage. But so far, everything's good. Okay, now I've been running around doing errands for about two hours, and I still feel fine. Um, I have to say, when I move around, it feels kind of like I'm wearing really thick shorts. Because it has kind of... I, I don't know if it's maneuvered like down my thighs, or if that's just a feeling I get, but that's how I feel. I will still be doing some more shopping and will be driving back home and then I'll report again. I'm wearing my early 1880s Victorian outfit and all the proper underlayers, just to give the proper experience of what it really would have been like to be a Victorian lady wearing this stuff. Okay, I just had my first bathroom break and I have to say that with the drawers, it was complicated. I left the drawers out now since we're at home and I don't have to worry about stains so much. And also like, I think I overdid it with the layers. Like, I think you'd be fine with just having it long enough to like flip over so that it stays tucked into the ties. I don't think you need it to come back down all the way under. Cause that's just, I mean, maybe for nighttime use if you have, if you're a really heavy blader, but other than that, I don't think you'll need them. Especially if you're changing it with every bathroom bike. But I'm still gonna, cause I'm thinking that I would test it out that it doesn't work for the same four to six hours as modern pads do. So I'm gonna still go for a few hours cause we're now at about three hours. And so that did kind of make things more complicated than necessary. But yeah, I, I just wanna test it out properly. So I'll report back. Okay, so now it's been the full six hours and I still don't feel any leaks or any discomfort in that regard. Um, I do have to say though that 
like even though I have been active today like I went walking around in stores and I have been washing dishes and doing things like that around the house I don't think I would personally feel very comfortable doing like active sports in this like for that I think I would go for more of the same kind of like triangular contraption thing that like was used as babies diapers in the era and I'm wondering if like even this if it was shorter and instead of having like the it just fold over and be secured with the straps if like having little loops on the ends and putting that on the straps would make it so much more secure that like would that make a difference or does it just need the extra width that would come from a, tri a triangle to make it actually like make you feel secure enough for sports and things but I don't know if this is really a problem that they had or if it's more of a me problem because I haven't I don't have experience with this sort of period protection and because the period protection I m normally go for is a cup and I kind of always get the similar kind of feeling also if I wear a modern pad so I'm not sure how much this is a me problem and how much it's an actual period product problem. The one thing I'll say against this is that it does t make your bathroom breaks much longer than without anything with like without having your period but then again again personally this might be too much information for somebody but I personally always take a lot longer during in the restroom during my period than I do normally so again might be also a me issue and also because I'm not used to using this if I would have been using this sort of tra contraption from since I first had my period at 13 then probably yes I would be comfortable by my age and I would be very used to knowing how much I can move but I do have to say I'm surprised at how absorbent this is because like I mean yes I do know that th this sort of fabrics were used as cloth diapers and are still today when my kids were small I used cloth diapers with them and I actually did use the like foldable old-fashioned sometimes just to try it out and um so yeah I guess I shouldn't be surprised but I still am surprised now as far as washing these th devices goes uh in modern times we actually with our modern wash washing machines are actually probably less hygienic than they were because not they would use soap to wash it yes and first of course do things to like rinse it in cold water and things like that like you always do with anything that has blood on it but after that they would boil it and our modern day washing machines even the hottest cycle is still not the temperature of actual boiling water so though our modern washing machines do kill bacteria it's actually not as secure as the historical washing methods would have been. Now after having taken all that off, I realized my mistake and why it, I was feeling like if I was super active, like playing tennis or something like that, that I might feel insecure in it holding, was because I severely underestimated the stretch of, or elasticity in that diaper weave because not only did it like it wasn't supposed to reach around my body it was like 10 inch shor inches shorter or something it reached my around my body easily but also it had stretched also this way so that double fold made it so that it, I couldn't easily secure it like afterwards and tighten it so that it would be like flexing with my body and not just stretching stretching further further away so yeah definitely only one 
fold and then just enough so that you can secure it so that it folds over or put the straps on the edges or something. But hey, this is why we experiment because we don't anymore have the grandmas who would remember how these things were used and how they were to use them. So we run into these problems simply because we haven't tried them. If I would have been using these all my life, obviously I wouldn't have these same problems. Now I'm ready to go get changed and I thank you for watching this and I hope you enjoyed it and if you did please hit that thumbs up button because it really does help out in this world and if you enjoyed this and would want to see more future videos from me please hit that subscribe button and I hope to see you again next time. Bye!